Oh, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Well, jobs are getting harder to come by everywhere in the world as the coronavirus pandemic continues to unleash its deadly impact on the global economy. It's even more dire in countries such as Nigeria, where unemployment was already at critical levels before the viral outbreak. Well, the upshot is that employers of labor are now adopting a more stringent set of expectations from their staff. And the multiplier effect is that job seekers and even those in employment must now improve their skill set, become more efficient and assume better multitasking abilities. Well, how can these new experiences be acquired with a minimum of no fuss? Well, joining us now to explore this further is Ibuko Olua Oyeleke, who is an agile coach and an IT products manager. Welcome to the show. A very good morning to you, Ibuko. If we were to start now with finding out just the, the very key things, how can somebody navigate this space where there's little to no work outside, little to no work outside, lots of uncertainty? How can someone, you know, hone their skills to make themselves more employable when we come out of this pandemic? All right. Uh, it's looking like we've got to hold oh, the beat for Ibuku have a, to Yeah, a little on. delay. Ibuku, can mm. you hear us? No, I can. Oh, lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely. Well, we've been really looking forward to having this conversation with you. Thank I wanted you. to know how somebody can navigate this space. There's so much uncertainty outside. Uh, lots of people perhaps losing their edge when it comes to employability. How can somebody hone their skills so that they, they can definitely navigate this time successfully and either come out of this lockdown period with employment or definitely more skills? How can somebody do that? Thank you for that question, because I feel like it's very easy to get discouraged. So my first tip is to remain positive. People are getting jobs. There are jobs out there. So the first thing is to understand that those jobs are available. They exist. There is the need for people. The problem is that most employers are kind of scared because nobody has been through this before, right? So they don't even know how to go about this. They don't know. They want to hire people. And I'm talking from my personal experience. I've gotten jobs from the US, from the UK, in Nigeria, but most of them are like dragging or giving, you know, advanced start dates to say, we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know when we're able to come in. And for most companies, they've never had to have their people work online or onboard new staff online. So it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> the, the vice president's committee uh, just uh, came out with a very dire projection of job losses, uh, 39.4 million. Oh job losses by December if certain things are not done because of the challenges posed, of course, by COVID-19 that we all are witnessing. In America, the situation is no different. About 44 million or more have applied for unemployment uh, benefits. What do you make of this picture? It is very heartbreaking because I know that there are some people who, you know, depend on their day-to-day -day business for sustenance. And it's, it's a difficult situation, honestly. No, but I don't know the cure for COVID-19. I wish I did. But um, unemployment is all over the place. So maybe if that, if that information is out there, maybe it makes job seekers feel better to say, you know, this is not just me. It is not about your skills. If you're being followed or you've been laid off, it is not about you personally. It's just most companies don't even know how to go about this. But the positive thing is I know for sure that after this is over, and companies figure out a way to onboard people, to start business, and to create online a way to work from home, there will be a lot of jobs. Because even the companies that have laid a lot of people off, they would, once business starts to pick up, they will need all of those people back. So it's to make sure that you're on top of your game, you're still applying to those jobs, you're fixing your resume, you're writing, writing a very, very good cover letter, and just making sure you're connecting with your people on LinkedIn, Dice, or whatever you have. Ibukun, I'm sure people would hear your story and feel motivated. In your first answer there, you did say that you've received job offers from the United States and, and in the United Kingdom and here in Nigeria. At, at a time like this, it's almost unheard of. So tell us how you were able to put yourself in a position where you can still very much see that there is employ employability activity out there. So I would thank you for the compliment, by the way. But I feel like number one is you have to always, even before COVID-19, at every point, you have to always be prepared, right? You have to always get ahead of the game. 
keep your whatever field. I'm an IT professional, so I make sure that I'm going on to the next best thing. I'm doing a course. I'm working on my skills. I'm making. I'm getting feedback from my um, bosses and from my mentors. I'm making sure that I stay on, on top of my game. So I feel like it's the same for everyone. No matter what business you're in, you know what company you work for. Just make sure that you remain relevant. Yeah, you talked about. IT, you're into IT, of course, uh, Agile coach and IT projects manager. So the VPs committee, I, I go back to that again, recommends the creation of wide variety of uh, tech and ICT jobs. How can this help? This will help because most IT jobs, are able, you're able to do them from home. So if I have been working from home. I am currently employed in the U.S. and I'm in Nigeria. The only thing I've had to do is to change my work schedule. So I work from like 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. So I feel like those jobs, I think the reason they've put that out there is because it's easier to move those jobs to remote jobs where you can work from anywhere in the country. Mm. Mm. All right. Uh, let, let me even chip in this. Uh... The central bank had to step in at a point to stop banks from laying off staff. The EU asked companies not to uh, lay off staff because they will assist in even paying salaries, you know, uh, to whittle down the effect of COVID-19. What measures should be taken by, by government to soft uh, landing of, for the soft landing of employees? What, what measures? I mean, do you think government, what more measures do you think government my, should, should, should take, yeah. my answer is going to be, because I am I'm, I'm privileged to have exposure to the U.S. and the Nigerian market. For the U.S., it's easier because people can apply for unemployment, they can apply for, you know, food stamps. But in Nigeria, we're not there yet. So I feel like those things should be put in place by the government to say that you cannot lay people off during a pandemic. It's almost inhuman, and I feel like it's, it's not necessary. I... And this is the time for you to look out for the companies that you, you know, support and how they're treating their staff and the citizens of Nigeria, because nobody planned for this. Nobody no knew this was coming. So I feel like they need to continue to put those kind of um, policies in place to make sure that employers are being fair to their employees. Do you have, do you have, uh, let me just ask you this. Sure. Do you have staff? You know, because you're not about... She's, she does sound like a fantastic leader, doesn't it? I mean, do you have staff? Do you have your own business in Bukololua? I know that I've actually... I, I've been able to screen you on social media, and I know that in addition to your to your work um, as an IT projects manager and an agile coach, you also give financial advice to people. So how... Tell us more about your... I think it's called the 10-minute financial guide. Tell us more about that and what it aims to do and how you've been able to continue doing that during this uh, during this crisis. So I I started that platform because I come from a very, very poor home. I came from nothing, basically. So, but, so money and financial management has always been the forefront of, like, I always think, okay, I need to save money. I need to invest my money. So I, and I see that a lot of people, especially my own people, Nigerians, we don't really have a saving culture. We're more, you know, you have to see me and things like that. So I created that for younger people and people like me to learn how to manage their money properly and how to invest, because some people don't do it just because they don't have the information. So to just do my beat, and I also offer agile training sessions as well for um, two Nigerians so that they're able to improve on their marketability after the pandemic. Yeah, you know, why I asked you whether you have a staff is because uh, companies would tell you that this borders on income, you know, because, for example, mm. I was just reading up something about uh, 42, it says about, uh, 40, I'll get it later, but the number of people who have lost jobs are quite humongous. And these companies have to deal with the fact, for example, the tourism industry, uh, the travel industry, hard, hardest hit. They're not flying, they're not making money. So how do you then begin to tell them, keep employees, you know, how are they going to pay them? Because they says, I don't make you money. So that was why I was asking, do you have staff? If you have, have you laid any off? Because you're saying this is not a time for companies to lay off staff. You know, they're, they're talking about uh, how to survive. In fact, in an interview, you know, uh, we had on COVID-19, said if you have money, 
And if you don't have six, if you have, if you don't have up to six months, right, saved, uh, saved, mm -hmm. emergency, you better, you better stop spending money. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's why I'm asking whether you have staff. So and uh, to answer your question, I don't. I manage my um, platform on my own, but I will still say that I've worked for a lot of multinational companies. If it's a one-man business, I can understand. If it's a small-scale business, I can understand. And I feel like, you know, you can start from, you know, cutting the salaries into half if they're not coming to work. But to, um, for bigger companies, you mentioned banks. These people have a lot of money. Trust me, um, paying their staff for three months is not going to make them go under. So I feel like we should just, as much as we can, so let's assume that I had a staff and I was paying them maybe 100,000 naira and then this happened and they're not able to work, maybe I would give them 20,000 naira, just something. Just, I feel like the message I'm trying to pass is please be kind to people because this is terrible times. No, but like, I didn't know that I would be stuck here. So we need to be kind to each other. Yeah, actually. They, they, <laughs> you, men you mentioned being stuck here. What, what do you mean about being stuck here? Do you mean here in Nigeria? Yes. Tell us more about that, what's happened? So <laughs> I quit my job late last year to travel. And then I came to Nigeria and I went back to London and then I, I couldn't go back to the US. So I was like, well, I'd rather be stuck in Nigeria with my family than be stuck in the UK. But I'm happy that I'm stuck here. I'm well, you, you couldn't really help it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I could like, have, I even could if have, you want, even if you didn't want to get stuck. I could have stayed in the UK though, so. Uh, oh, no, no, I, I mean, when you came back. Okay. Uh, also, okay, so, uh, um, as a coach, what will you really be advising both the employed, the unemployed, to do this period? What should be their paradigm, really, their attitude? For the employed, you should not get too comfortable because you don't know how long this is going to last. You don't know the decisions that your company is going to make. So make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. Make sure that um, you're remaining relevant in your department, in your company. You look, you're doing more than the average so that you stand out. Because when people lay off, they lay off the, you know, the hangers by first, right? Mm. So that would be the first. And even if you're employed, continue to improve on your skills. It's the same thing. But if you're unemployed at this time, my heart goes to you. But be encouraged. So what you can do is to take out some time to see, you know, is there any other, is there any skill that you have? Is there anything that you've done that people have complimented you on? If it's making people's hair, clothes, anything that you can do. This is not a time to, um, you know, be biased about, oh, I'm too big to do this job or I'm too qualified to do this job. Anything you can get at this time, please take it for sustenance. And then once this is over, Trust me, I can put my word on it. These jobs are out there. Employers are just worried. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Light at, at the, the end, end of the, of the tunnel. tunnel, quite encouraging. And Definitely. that's, that's, that's very the optimistic. best way yeah, to look at it, really. It, right. going, it is time for us to take a very short break. When we come back, we will continue our discussion with you. So please do stay with us. with Ibuko Luau Yeleke, an agile coach and IT projects manager. Uh, glad to know that you're still there, uh, Ibuku. Uh, I, I was just thinking uh, off camera, what your experience, you know, has been as a project manager, you know, IT project manager, since this challenge is setting, because that could come in handy for people who are watching. I mean, that's the whole essence of this uh, interview anyway. So what's been your experience? And, Let's get that out and see how it can help others. So my experience has been that project execution has been slowing down. Everything is dragging a little longer than normal. So that includes, you know, recruitment, 
um, just execution in general. People are not willing, sponsors are not willing to just give out a lot of money. Everybody's holding back. So the same way individuals are holding back to say, hey, I don't want to you know, spend all of my money, the business sponsors are thinking in that direction as well. So I feel like you just continue to do all you can to deliver values to your customer. And this is, you know, IT project management can be on a large scale or on a smaller scale. So if you're one business person, a sole proprietor, or you have a small business, just look for ways to put your business online. Look for ways to reach out to your customers. This is the time to draw up a customer lease, call them, check up on them, so that when business resumes, they call you. And just um, do the best that you can. Honestly, this is not the time to put pressure on anybody because we're all under pressure. So just take things as easy, do the best that you can, do the best of the work that you can if you're you know, working as an IT project manager or project manager or whatever it is you're doing, and just execute as much as you can. I remember I asking one of some on the pressure. <laughs> mm. <laughs> exactly. Well, if we were to look at, uh, I guess, budgeting and how people can be more smart with money at a time like this, I wonder what your thoughts are. So, for example, let's, have, let's say you have somebody who has been able to retain employment, uh, but perhaps their income has been slashed by a quarter, for example. I mean, how do you think that they should navigate their spending? Because whether you want to become a consumer, that depends on your amount of disposable income. And if that depletes, how does somebody, how are they able to identify what's important, what's not important, like debts, for example? Do, what advice would you give to somebody who has accruing debts and perhaps might not know which, which ones to spend their money on? What, what, what is more important, do you think? How do you think consumers should be thinking about spending their money before they even start to think about disposable income and the nice things that they can buy? So... Creditors are not going to like me, but please don't pay any debts. Ooh. Keep hold off from your debt, but before you do that, do it in a responsible manner. Send them, you know, a letter, an email saying, hey, you know, this is the situation with my job, and I don't have as much disposable income, so I won't be making the payment. So let them know that you won't be paying. There is no shame. Again, like I said, don't put pressure on yourself, okay? And the next thing is once you do that, so don't pay debt, hold on to liquid money, you know, cash or whatever it is you have in your hands, and please reduce consumption. Remember how you thought that you couldn't survive on your 60,000 salary. Now it's been cut to 30,000 and you're not dead. Like as Nigerians will say, but did you die? You didn't die. So which means that you, we really need less than we think we need in terms of like food and stuff. Just try like clothes, in my opinion, clothes and shoes and material things. The, Top three things that you need for sustenance is a place to lay your head, food, water, and if you fall sick, you should be able to take care of yourself. Those are the only things you should be focused on right now. Any other thing is unnecessary. Yeah, but you're right there, really. I mean, people are not paying. Uh, most companies are not like, like I said earlier, I said if you don't have a, about six months of money to spend, just stop spending. So some companies, quite a lot, are not either executing, executing projects or paying until everybody understand. I mean, right. most people understand that uh -huh. COVID-19 has really, uh, I, don't, I don't want to use the word wrecked, but has brought businesses down. You could use wrecked. You could say wrecked. Wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's, it's there are, there are some businesses that have really suffered. Wrecked, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, one of the key goals, I keep going back to this uh, uh, VP's, uh, you know, the Economic Sustainability uh, Committee that was... Uh, initiated by the president uh, that the VP of Shobajo is heading. He, he has come out to say one of the goals of the committee is to propose a clear-cut strategy, you know, to keep jobs, create opportunities, you know, for new ones as well. I, I am wondering, how do you think this can be done? He, he said that they've said there that one of the best ways for the economy to bounce back, because it's titled bounce, bouncing back or something like that, is for us to begin to look inwards in every aspect of business. And that's the way that Nigeria can go to begin to, and uh, most importantly, to make sure that this is Im implemented. Uh, and the president, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank the committee for, for the job uh, they have done. I love the vice president, but I'm going to also challenge them to think in, because I feel like, you know, looking inwards, what does that mean? I mean, if I'm, I'm broke, 
I have three children. I don't have a job. How inwards can I, you know, how much can I look inwards? Well, he was talking about manufacturing. Uh, the president said, eat what we grow, grow oh. what we eat. How businesses can begin to, you know, uh, use things manufactured here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Even if you're importing, import the things to help local, oh. uh, you know, produce or, or, or you know, uh, whatever you're going to use to increase, to help uh, MS, you know, medium scale uh, businesses and, and stuff. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Then that, I, I think I got the question wrong. So I feel like that's the only way. So if you understand economics very well and for the people watching, it's worth um, taking a look at to see how um, a, a country can bounce back from a wreck or a depression or a pandemic like this is to pump more money into the economy, right? And this is through people like you and I and, you know, the government. So this is not the time. Please, you know, call your friend who makes a dress and have her make a dress for you. Call your friend who cooks and have her cook for you. You know, call your friend who bakes cookies and get it from her. That way you're putting your money in the hands of a fellow Nigerian who is able to use that money to also take care of themselves. This is not the time to um, buy your, you know, biscuits and candies from the UK. The UK is not going to help us. So I feel, and this is something that I'm passionate about, and I'm glad you asked that question. At the end of the day, we're Nigerians. We need to take care of each other. Mm. We need to look out for one another. And we need to start to appreciate and love the things that are our own. Yeah. So <laughs> when, you know, this is the time to encourage people to, to pro because there's a for lot For example, of what you're wearing is made here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should be thinking about, yeah, yes, you know. Yes. Making our own clothes, consuming what we eat, eating what we consume, pumping money into those areas so that the economy can grow. Just like you said, it, 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 it goes out and comes into Nigeria that way instead of going out of the country. Mm -hmm. And there is something that I do personally, and this is not for everyone, but I know that um, there's some, you know, even in the small things, you know, salons, I don't go to the salons that I would usually go to, like the high class Salons. I try to go to like more rural areas where I know that those people are actually there. That five thousand that I'm going to pay to get my hair done means a lot to someone in I don't know the area. That's that interesting. <laughs> someone in like it. <laughs> so please, you know, try. You're not that way. You're not giving them money. They're working for money, but at least they're getting. Um, patronized. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, in the very early parts of our conversation, you, you mentioned there being a light at the end of the tunnel. What do you think that this new post-COVID world will look like? Do you think, ideally, it'd be one where people have a lot more appreciation for Nigerian-made or, or African-made products? Or do you think that we'll slowly go back to, to what we were doing, how we were living before the pandemic? I... I have come up with this saying that if this situation doesn't change you mm. in how you see things and how you, you know, manage your finances, you will never change. This, you should, this should give you, you know, a sort of retrospective to say, listen, what are the things that are really important? You know, what are the pe who are the people that are really important? Now it's not the celebrities that are making our lives easy. It's the delivery men, the cleaners, you know, the people that people usually overlook. So I feel like life will take a different turn. And it will not just you and I, but the government as well. I mean, this must shoot them and give them a pinch in the leg that, look, mm -hmm. we've got to change our paradigm. We've got to concentrate on making things work in this nation. I'm not going to let you put me in trouble because I'm trying to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, but well, the same thing you're saying, <laughs> said in a different way. But no, I get, you're totally right. And I was joking about that. Nobody can see, but really, um, it should because now you're stuck here. So if you're watching and you're a politician, well, hopefully they don't know where I live, but <laughs> do you see why it's it's better to... Because there is a... Your I mean, for example, the health sector. Nobody can travel. That's if what you're I was sick, you're going to get... Mm. Uh, um, at at FAB did a, 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 um, uh, a, a, report. a report where there was a heart surgery right here in Nigeria. 
So, and that was what I was going to touch on, to say that, you know, as, you know, if you're richer or you're, you're privileged or you're a politician, this is the time for you to really look at the people that voted you into power and to think about it. This is a taste basically of your own medicine, if I put it that way, to say that, you know, hospitals, you can't go anywhere because normally, even if you were to go on your private jet, if you go to the UK, the, the best anything can do for you, anyone can do for you is to give you a ventilator. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna give you new lungs or new, a new heart, right? Exactly. So this is a time to really think about making Nigeria a place where you can live. And if you were to be stuck here, you will still be okay. So maybe some of those things that you travel out for, or you, know, you, you go to the UK or Germany for, maybe this is the time to think about bringing them back home. I like that <laughs> phrase, Ibuku. This is the time to make Nigeria where you will live. As you mm. make your bed, you lie on it. So interesting uh, speaking with you, it Ibuku Oluwa Oyeleke, Agile Coach slash IT project manager. Well, thank you so much thank you so for much. being on the program. When we come back, it'll be all about the latest COVID-19 global update. Stay with us.